In a previous video, we have seen the concept of an equation of state, and we have seen how that equation of state looks like for an ideal gas. The conditions for ideality in a gas are such where you have that the molecules or the particles of the gas are on average so far apart from each other that there's no interactions. Okay, and that generally takes place at um, their ambient conditions and ambient pressures. But it turns out that you don't always have ideal behavior in gases, uh, especially when you start to increase the pressure. Uh, now, those uh, gas particles on average are going to be closer to each other, and what that means is that uh, they will start to interact with each other either attractively or repulsively. Right? So what then happens is that when you start to turn on those uh, interactions, when the molecules are sufficiently close that they interact with each other, then the ideal gas equation of state breaks down and is not able to capture reality anymore. Right, so uh, this is what, we've, what we're going to do in this video is kind of flesh out a, a little bit that idea of what a real gas is compared to an ideal gas. And we're going to see a metric which is called the compression factor or compressibility that allows us to understand uh, deviations from ideal gas behavior and how those deviations are connected to the interactions between the gases in a sample. Okay, so uh, let's actually then get started here with uh, an ideal gas uh, where you would have that, again, on average, uh, the uh, gas particles will be quite far apart from each other. Okay, um, and uh, then that, what it means is, is that there's no interactions and the other thing that it means is that uh, you can actually assume that the volume of the particles is completely negligible compared to the total volume uh, of that container. Okay, and again, those are two conditions that need to be satisfied for the ideal gas approximation. Now, uh, what we then can try to do here is uh, apply some pressure uh, to decrease uh, the volume Okay, and then what should happen is that on average those molecules will now be much closer to each other than they were before. Okay, and, and this has a profound consequence to the way that those molecules interact. And we're going to see that by plotting here uh, a graph of how the interaction energy changes uh, compared to the distance between two gas particles. Okay, so here in the x-axis I'm going to plot the distance r between two gas particles, and this could be two gases that you can, any two, any two gases that you can think of, so let's keep it easy and do some argon uh, atoms, or maybe neon, or any normal gas, really. And uh, in the x, in the y axis, we're going to put here the interaction energy, which I'm going to write as V for potential energy. Okay, uh, this is going to be the limit where there's no attractions or repulsions, or they're identical. That will be zero interaction energy. And then what you expect is that uh, in the asymptotic, asymptotic limit, where these two particles are really far apart from each other, there will be no interaction. Okay, so again, when R is very large, you actually expect uh, reality to track with this line. And you do see that. Okay, so that's what happens at really large separation. But also, uh, whenever those molecules start to get close, whenever these particles start to get close, then there's going to be a distance at which uh, the electrons in uh, one of those particles start to feel the attraction of the protons in the nucleus of the other particle. And that leads to a destabilization, uh, which means that there's an attraction. The potential energy drops, and what you actually observe is that this curve looks like this. Okay, and that's as the molecules, the particles, are start to attract each other. Uh, uh, right, so again, there will be a situation here where you will have that there's attractions taking place between those two particles. They attract each other. Now, uh, if you uh, reduce the internuclear separation between those two particles sufficiently, now the electronic clouds of those atoms will encroach on each other, and that leads to repulsion. Right, so you can't get very, cl very close. As a matter of fact, there's actually a turnover in the potential energy where if you start to get those uh, uh, items really, really close, the potential energy will go up dramatically. And there will be a situation in which you might have to do that. And again, those are just uh, argon atoms. 
so they don't form a covalent bond or anything like that. Uh, that's just pure repulsion. Okay, so again, notice that uh, if the energies are above zero, uh, this is where repulsions dominate. And when the energies are below zero, this is the range uh, where you actually have that attractions dominate. Of course, when you're at really large distances, then there's no interactions, right? Because uh, uh, those uh, particles are not seeing each other at all. Okay, so that is going to matter to ideality in a gas. Now, suppose that you have a bath, and again, under ambient pressure, ambient temperature, those molecules are on average very close, very far away from each other. But if you start to increase the pressure, then what happens is that the average separation actually decreases, right? So you would be moving uh, along this direction, right? As you increase the pressure and reduce the volume available to those particles. Now, you can continue to increase the pressure, reduce the volume, until you come here so close that the energy from silver, and then you have the repulsions will take over. Okay, so again, uh, whenever you get to a, uh, uh, whenever you increase the pressure sufficiently that you start to see attractions or repulsions, then the ideal gas approximation will break down. Okay, so uh, the question then is, is there a way to detect whether uh, we have ideal gas behavior or whether the pressure is high enough that we actually don't have ideal gas behavior and we start to have real uh, gases with actual interactions between those particles. The metric that we're going to be using to track uh, uh, that deviation from ideality is going to be called the compression factor or the compressibility. Okay, and the definition is fairly straightforward. It's the uh, letter Z, and it is the ratio of pressure volume over NRT or pressure molar volume over RT. Okay, where the molar volume is, is the ratio of the volume over the number of moles. Okay, so notice that for an ideal gas, we expect the compression factor Z to be 1 at all conditions, right? Because PV is equal to NRT, right? So uh, you can kind of replace this right here in the denominator, and P over V is going to be equal to P over T, so that ratio should always be 1. Okay, so we can then actually say that, well, for an ideal gas, if we plot here what the compression factor is as a function of pressure, right, if this is the value 1, okay, then we expect that an ideal gas should actually behave like that regardless of the pressure. And any deviations from this C1 value, which is what you should always have for an ideal gas, will signal that you have deviations from ideality. Okay, so uh, it turns out that yes, gas is actually uh, the idea from ideality. We're going to plot here how the graph looks for nitrogen uh, at 273 Kelvin. It's going to be an approximate depiction of this. Okay, so notice that we're going to be moving from low pressure, so this will be pressure zero, or the limit of uh, low pressures, to high pressures. And I'm going to draw here uh, maybe this will be 200 atmospheres, okay? All right, so uh, here's the idea. When you have very low pressures, pressures close to zero, you're in this situation where there's no interactions between those gases. You will be to the right of this graph where, again, those molecules of nitrogen are really far from each other and are interacting. But as soon as you start to increase the pressure, that means you're uh, traveling in this direction uh, in this graph and you're going that direction in that graph, the first thing that happens is that those molecules actually uh, start to uh, interact with each other, they attract each other, right? So what that means is that uh, because there's attractions pulling the molecules closer to each other, that gas is easier to compress than it would be if there were no attractions, okay? So that uh, 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 lower compressibility, which, may, which means that this is actually harder, uh, easier to compress than if attractions are not there, means that the compression factor actually drops below, below 1. Okay, so again, when attractions dominate, you actually have that uh, as you increase the pressure, then this uh, uh, gas is easier to compress, and the compression factor is smaller than 1. Okay, so we're actually then uh, coming uh, in this, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, right to left in this graph, where attractions are increasingly more important, that means, and that means that the compression factor becomes
further and further from one or lower and lower than one, but eventually you start to turn over, right? And that's what happens out here, turn over. And if you uh, increase the pressure so much that on average those molecules are really close to each other, then they will start to repel. Okay, so you will be climbing this part of the potential energy, and that means that you actually go, uh, and now this gas is actually harder to compress. The compression factor becomes uh, larger than one because those molecules are so close to each other that they really are repelling each other. You try to increase the pressure, uh, that's going to be much harder to compress than if those repulsions were not there or if the attractions were dominant. Okay, so again, uh, you turn over into compression factors that are larger than one once you get to the repulsive part of this potential. Okay, so uh, uh, that's how we know that nitrogen actually does uh, deviates from ideality at 273 Kelvin. Okay, just by tracking the compression factor. Notice that at low pressures, at uh, very low pressures or even pressures close to one atmosphere, uh, the compression factor is one. And this is great news because it means that nitrogen can be treated uh, as an ideal gas if the pressure is low. But if you're interested in applications where the pressure has to be high, then uh, you clearly don't have ideal behavior at all. Okay, this is a fairly universal behavior for many gases, but the exact shape of this curve depends on temperature. And this is something that we're going to be seeing in future videos. For example, for hydrogen at 273 Kelvin, what you actually find is that that compressibility, that compression factor, is always larger than one. And the reason is that hydrogen molecules interact very, very, very weakly with each other. That interaction curve looks more or less like this, a tiny little well, and yes, uh, you get to the repulsion, repulsive part of the potential uh, really quickly. Right, so at, uh, uh, this is for H2 at 273 Kelvin. Right, so it turns out that at 273 Kelvin you have enough thermal motion that you can kind of skip over this attraction and then you're always kind of in the repulsion, uh, repulsible part of the, poten of the potential and that means that H2 is actually always harder to compress than it would be if interactions were not present. Okay, so let me summarize this video. Uh, we have seen how actual gases tend to deviate from ideality, especially at high pressures. And we have seen that the main culprit of that deviation from ideality is the fact that real gases exhibit real interactions that can be either attractions or repulsions. Depending on whether uh, attractions or repulsions are dominant, you are going to find compression factors that deviate from the ideal case, which is C1, by values that are lower than 1, which means uh, these gases are easier to compress if attractions are dominant, or values that are larger than one, which means that this gas is harder to compress uh, if uh, you have the repulsions are dominant. In the next videos, we're going to see uh, uh, questions of state that try to incorporate uh, the effect of attractions and repulsions so that we, we can transcend ideal gas and then be able to treat uh, real gases.